All right guys, so in this video, we're going to implement a dropdown with Tailwind CSS. This can be used at multiple uh, locations, maybe let's say in a menu or somewhere. So uh, let's get started. I'll just add a div inside it, a whole button and the dropdown will go. And then I'll add a button to toggle the dropdown. So let's say menu. And then we'll give it a class of BG blue 300, uh, 300, then PX or py2 round by the way guys if you are confused as to what i'm doing here with pg blue 300 px4 py2 and rounded you can go ahead and check my previous videos because this these are really short digestible videos through which you can learn a lot of tailwind css uh, i've covered this stuff in all three videos basically all right so this is our button and then we'll have a drop down and here, I guess we can have, let's say three links because it's a menu, there will be links. So add three links, let's say posts, uh, profile, settings, if I can type correctly. Yeah. So now all these are showing up over here. You guys can't see it because it's over a dark background. So onto a div, let's add a BG gray 200. Yeah. And let's make it a flex container and flex direction as call. So with flex, you can set that it's a flex container and then flex call just says flex direction column. All right, and make it rounded corners, add a little bit of margin from the top yeah i guess one will also su suffice now what we're going to do is add a little bit of padding inside our drop down yeah and just decrease the size of the text using text sm now the other thing is this is just stretching as to its size i guess we want it to be a little more wider so we can explicitly specify that using width property cool that looks nice now i'll just add a hash to all these links then i'll just use the multi cursor to apply classes to each of these because these are going to be styled in a similar way so uh, we have applied padding 2 to the whole drop down as a whole then we can apply padding x2 more and let's say padding y1 more to each of these cool and after that uh, we want them to color up on hover so we can say hover uh, bg uh, let's say blue 200 so let's just try out how that looks right now yeah that looks right i guess that looks fine all right and the last thing that i really want to do is uh, make these uh, hover state rounded because that's the theme we are going with everything in our UI is rounded and except BG blue at 200 I guess 300 will work well yeah now to sprinkle in the interactivity we'll use some JavaScript and for that I'll just set up a little bit of I a few IDs for the drop down and the button so that we can target them in the JavaScript. Uh, all right. All right. So let's get into the JavaScript now to make this interactive. I'm going to have a script tag and let's say window dot add event listener DOM content loaded. I just really like to do this so that uh, never gets run before the DOM content is loaded. All right, so right in here, we'll say const menu button is document dot query selector, query selector, and we gave it an ID of menu button. So hashtag menu BTN, and then similarly, we'll get the drop down. We gave it a ID of drop down. So that's it. 
all right so now what we can do is if we give the drop, drop down a class of hidden it will go away so we just need to toggle the class hidden and flex basically to make this work right and right now as you see i if i change out the class hidden for flex the button will jump up over again this is just because of how i have base style set up over here using flexbox i think i should get rid of these right now and just add a bit of class margin let's say 10 to this yeah so that's also fine for our thing basically if now i toggle flex to hidden the button won't jump it would stay in its position so initially we want the drop down to be hidden by default and on the menu button we add an event listener click so when the button is clicked we'll run this callback function and in this we'll check if drop down dot class list dot contains <coughs> hidden so we're just saying if the drop down list uh, if the classes if hidden is in is applied to drop down right now then drop down dot class list dot remove hidden and then we would want to do drop down dot class list dot add flex cool let's try that out right now if we click on this it shows up now we want to say else if hidden was not in the class list we would say because if hidden wasn't there then flex was so we will say drop down dot class list dot remove flex and we will say drop down dot class list dot add hidden so this should give us the exact functionality that we want we click it shows up then goes away shows up goes away yeah and right now it's just showing up at place the next step would be to add tra uh, animations transitions to it but that's not in the scope right now i might make a video on transitions later on so i have an idea we could refactor this code to just be of two lines honestly so i'm just gonna refresh this and comment out all this if else so right inside this callback function itself we can say drop down dot class list dot toggle hidden and drop down dot class list dot toggle flex so let me explain this to you guys what it says is if the class list has hidden then remove it if it doesn't then add it and if the drop down has a class of flex uh, then remove it if it doesn't add it so basically toggling the values and this will work for us because by default it is hidden so the first time when you click it uh, it's going to toggle the hidden class basically remove it and toggle the flex class add it and then when you click on it again it will toggle on the hidden class and add it and toggle off the flex class and remove it so this gives us the same functionality in just two lines all right guys so that's it for this video and i hope you guys had fun implementing this little drop down over here it was pretty simple people think implementing a drop down is a little intimidating but in fact it isn't so that's it guys uh, subscribe for more videos coming up in this series and drop a like if you find this video helpful and tell me in the comments if you have some feedback for me so that i could improve the future videos for you guys thank you